California DMV Handbook for your CDL. Audio Edition, Section 5.4. The best way to learn is to listen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be finishing up Section Number 5 in this video. And we begin talking about using your air brakes. Normal stops. Normal stops. Push the brake pedal down. Control the pressure so the vehicle comes to a smooth, safe stop. If you have a manual transmission, do not push the clutch in until the engine RPM is down close to the idle. When stopped, select a starting gear. Braking with anti-lock brakes. Braking with anti-lock brakes. When you brake hard on slippery surfaces in a vehicle with a, without ABS, your wheels may lock up. When your steering wheels lock up, you lose steering control. When your other wheels lock up, you may skid, jackknife, or even spin the vehicle. ABS, or analog brake system, ABS helps you avoid wheel lockup. The computer senses impending lockup, reduces the braking pressure to a safe level, and helps you maintain control. You may or may not be able to stop faster with ABS, but you should be able to steer around an obstacle while braking and avoid skids caused by overbraking. Having ABS on, on only the tractor, only the trailer, or even only one axle still gives you more control over the vehicle during braking, braking normally. When only the tractor has ABS, you should be able to maintain steering control and there is less chance of jackknifing. But keep your eye on the trailer and let up on the brakes, if you can do so safely, if it begins to swing out. When only the trailer has ABS, the trailer is less li likely to swing out. But if you lose steering control or start to, the tractor jackknife, let up on the brakes until you gain control. When you drive a tractor-trailer combination with ABS, you should brake as you always have. In other words, use only the braking force necessary to stop safely and stay in control. Brake the same way regardless of whether you have ABS on the tractor-trailer or both. Also, as you slow down, monitor your tractor and trailer and back off the brakes to stay in control. There is only one exception to this procedure. If you always drive a straight truck or combination with working ABS on all axles, in an emergency stop you can fully apply the brakes. And without ABS, you still have normal brake functions. Drive and brake as you always have. And remember, if your ABS malfunctions, you still have regular brakes. Drive normally, but get to a service station soon. Now let's talk about emergency stops. Emergency stops. If somebody suddenly pulls out in front of you, your natural response is to hit the brakes. This is a good response if there's enough stopping distance, if you use the brakes correctly. You should brake in a way that will keep your vehicle in a straight line and allow you to turn if it becomes necessary. You can use the controlled braking method or the stab braking method. Let's talk about those, the controlled braking method. With this method, you apply the brakes as hard as you can without locking up the wheels. Keep steering wheel movements very small while doing this. If you need to make a larger steering adjustment or if the wheels lock, release the brakes. Reapply the brakes as soon as you can. Now the stabbing braking method. Stab braking. Apply your brakes all the way. Release the brakes when the wheels lock up. As soon as the wheels start rolling, apply the brakes fully again. It can take up to one second for your wheels to start rolling after you release the brakes. If you reapply the brakes before the wheels start rolling, the vehicle will not straighten out. Stopping distance. Let's talk about your stopping distance. Now we did talk about stopping distance back in section 2.6 under speed and stopping distance. With air brakes there is an added delay. It's called brake lag. This is the time required for the brakes to work after the brake pedal is pushed. With hydraulic brakes, like used in cars and light medium trucks, the brakes work instantly. However, with air brakes it takes a little time, like a half a second more for the air, air to flow through the line to the brakes. Thus the stopping distance for vehicles with air brake systems is made up to four different factors. You got your perception distance, your reaction distance, your brake lag distance, your braking distance for a total stopping distance. The air brake lag distance at 55 miles an hour on drive pavement has about 32 feet. So at 55 miles per hour for an average driver under good traction and braking conditions, the total stopping distance is over 450 feet. That's over a football field. Take a look at this picture. Okay, let's talk about brake fading or failure. Your brake failure or fading. Brakes are designed so that the brake shoes or pads rub against the brake drum or disc to slow the vehicle. 
Braking creates heat, but brakes are designed to take a lot of heat. However, brakes can fade or fail from too much heat, caused by using them too much and not relying on the engine braking effect. Excessive use of the service brakes results in overheating and leads to brake fade. Brake fade results from excessive heat causing chemical changes in the brake lining where reduced friction and also causes expansion of the brake drums. As the overheated drums expand, the brake shoes and linings have to move farther to contact the drums and the force of the contact is reduced. Continued overuse may increase brake fade until the vehicle cannot be slowed down or even stopped. Now brake fade is also affected by adjustment. To safely control a vehicle, every brake must do its sh fair share of the work. Brakes out of adjustment will stop doing their sh fair share before there are those who are in adjustment. The other brakes can then overheat and fade, and there will not be enough braking available to control the vehicle. Brakes can get out of adjustment quickly, especially when they are hot. Therefore, check your brake adjustment often. Now let's talk about the proper braking technique. Remember, the use of brakes on a long and or steep downgrade is only a supplement to the braking of the effect of the engine. So the main braking effect on the downgrade is your engine. Once the vehicle is in the correct low gear, the following is the proper braking technique. Apply the brakes just hard enough to fill a definite slowdown. Then, when your speed has reduced to approximately 5 miles per hour below your safe speed, release the brakes. Now this application should last for about three seconds. When your speed has increased to the safe speed, repeat steps one and two. For example, if your safe speed is 40 miles per hour, you would not apply the brakes until your speed reaches 40 miles per hour. You now apply the brakes hard enough to gradually reduce the speed to 35 miles per hour. And then release the brakes. Repeat this as often as necessary until you've reached the end of the downgrade. So I'll repeat, if you want to go 40, you stay below 40. When it gets to 40, hit the brakes, go down to 35, and let it slowly build up to 40, and then go back down to 35. So you don't get too far over 40. Okay, let's talk about low air pressure. If the low air pressure warning comes on, stop and safely park your vehicle as soon as possible. There might be an air leak in the system. Control braking is possible only while air remains in your tanks. The spring brakes will come on when the air pressure drops into the range of 20 to 45 PSI. A heavily loaded vehicle will take a long distance to stop because the spring brakes do not work on all axles. Now, lightly loaded vehicles or vehicles on slippery roads may skid out of control when the spring brakes come on. It is much safer to stop while there's enough air in your tank to use the foot brake. Parking brakes. Let's review your parking brakes. Anytime you park, use the parking brakes, except as noted below. Pull the parking brake control knob out to apply the parking brakes and push it in to release. The control will be a yellow diamond-shaped knob labeled parking brakes on newer vehicles. Now on older vehicles, it may be a round blue knob or some other shape. Do not use the parking brakes if the brakes are very hot or if the brakes are very wet in freezing temperatures. If they are used while they are very hot, they can be damaged by the heat. If they are used in freezing temperatures, when the brakes are very wet, they can freeze so the vehicle will then not be able to move. Now use wheel chocks on a level surface to hold the vehicle. Let hot brakes cool before using the parking brakes. If the brakes are wet, use brakes lightly while driving in low gear to heat and dry them. If your vehicle does not have automatic air tank drains, drain your air tanks at the end of each working day to remove moisture and oil. Otherwise, the brakes could fail. Never leave your vehicle undetended without applying the parking brakes or chalking the wheels. Your vehicle might roll away and cause injury and death and kill somebody. Okay, it's time to test your knowledge. We've completed section, subsection 5. I'll ask you a few questions. You should know the answer. If you don't, you should re-listen to this video. Question number 1. Why should you use the proper gear before starting down a hill? Number 2. What factors can cause brakes to fade or fail? Number 3. The use of brakes on long, steep downgrade is only a supplement to the braking effect of the engine. Is this true or false? Number four, if you are away from your vehicle only a short time, you do not need to use the parking brake. Is this true or false? Number five, how often should you drain air tanks? Number six, how do you brake when you drive a tractor-trailer combination with analog brakes? Number seven, 
you still have normal brake functions if your ABS is not working. Is this true or false? Now remember, these questions may be on your DMV test. If you can't answer them, please re-listen to this video. We've completed Section 5. In our next video, we'll go to Section 6.